next station is Tokyo. What's going on guys and welcome to Tokyo man after 16 hours and plus of traveling and all of that good stuff I finally made it <laughs> this is my dream trip man I've been wanting to do this since I was a little kid so finally I get to be here and I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of things today I am in the Senso G temple then after this we're gonna go ahead and go do a little bit of uh, go-kart riding like uh, Mario Kart style at nighttime at Tokyo. I mean, it's around like 5 p.m., but it gets like dark here. So yeah, man, I am literally in the middle of the crowd right now. I am on my way right now. I'm gonna do some B-roll, some flicks, show you really quick. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and do the whole uh, go-kart riding. Riding these go-karts was one of the funnest things I did all trip. They were not that slow and I was able to just ride and enjoy the streets of Tokyo. By far a cool experience. Are you ready? I just realized that most of my footage was not 4k so if it looks a little off my bad but yeah man this is actually a pretty cool experience yeah. you know most of the locals say what's up and I guess some of the tourists also say what's up because you know they're like uh, some Japanese some American I'm from other countries. They be saying what's up and waving. The kids love it. It's actually a pretty fire experience, man. And at nighttime, it's almost like the way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Hey! See? <laughs> the next day, we visited some parks in Tokyo, also chasing to see some cherry blossom trees, aka sakuras. This is the first trip that I took my photography more seriously. If you want a better view, you have to visit Shibuya Sky. And let me tell you, the views are breathtaking. Almost every spot is a photo opportunity. Check out this top view of the famous Shibuya Crossing. Fire. After that, we did a little bit of shopping at Nike. Let's go ahead and check out this uh, spot right here. This is the second floor. Hopefully we find, you know, a good amount of kicks. Or oh, look at me, bro. Like I am sweating, walking, look a little bit like shit. <laughs> but we, we're out here. You feel me? Uh, let's go ahead and take a couple of kicks. I'm gonna flip the camera really quick. First things first. The Evo Mero fives, and as you can see, you now they are pretty fire, man. Um, never seen this colorway. Is this like an Asia exclusive? If you guys know, let me know down B low <laughs> this is one that i kind of wanted earlier i'm gonna see if they have my size again a woman exclusive but it kind of looks pretty fire in my opinion nike what are we doing here what is this nike what are we doing with the double air max 90 bubble uh classic and i'm saying super classic because then we have the air max dn um of course we already know that in uh air max day march 26 there's a bunch of colorways that released um not gonna lie i kind of like the supreme colorway a little bit more and i that's the one that i was gonna get i had it in my cart and i didn't pull the trigger like a fool not bad 30 percent off the vomero fives of course are kind of like my thing right now and then we have these beige ones right here which are pretty good as well so we have the Jordan 9 powder blues, we have the Olive Fives, the Spizikes. I am a little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. Like I thought it was gonna be a little bit better to have like some Asia exclusives, but I'm not really finding anything like that. Say what's up to the blog guys. Hey! So yeah, I'm gonna see what's up. 
<laughs> Give me one second, guys. Also, guys, let me show you the fit really quick because I haven't really shown you fits right now, right? So I have the uh, old school classic vintage Michael Jordan shirt with the 45 right there. Uh, look at this dude. We have some nice uh, carpenter pants. And we have the uh, Nike Air Max ones in black, white. Pretty, uh, pretty clean outfit, you know? And of course, we cannot forget the Fear of God hat. I do have a red jacket that kind of ties it all together, but your boy is hot and it's actually pretty uh, warm from what it was supposed to be. But later on at night, I'll have my whole fit and you'll see what we have planned for later on tonight. After Nike, of course, we had to hit up the famous babe store in Harajuku. I always wanted to come to at least one babe location in Japan. I promise I was trying to record in the store, but they just told me uh, no recording. After that, I hit up the Supreme store in Harajuku and I was able to get some videos, some pics, and everything was going good until they just told me. Uh, no recording. All right, let's visit some car enthusiast locations. First, we went to Liberty Walk, which of course I secured the bag. Then we went to the famous auto bag store in Tokyo, which has car parts, books, apparels. But first, look at this Skyline R34 that was just parked in the front. Ooh. Inside auto bags, there's also performance parts and even apparel from those same famous brands. They have racing jackets, hoodies, shirts, you name it. They even have a Starbucks inside. The second floor has performance parts, used parts, and nice Recaro seats. They have small collectible cars all throughout the store and tons of car books. So if you're also into these type of books, they have those as well. And oh, look at here. Look what we got here. I'm gonna have to get that 20% off, too. Let's get it. Oh man, we here, baby. We're at the famous Daikoku spot in a car meet full of JDM cars. I didn't really want to rush this part of the trip, so I will be making a second video just for the car content and the full experience. Good morning, good morning, good evening. Whenever you're watching this, you feel me? Today we're gonna go to Mount Fuji. I am on my way. Bruh. I am on my way right now to Mount Fuji. Well, not right now. I'm in a train station right now, walking towards the train. It's gonna be roughly one or two hours and hopefully there's uh, nice scenery on the way over there. So today is all about beautiful things, you feel me? So yeah, I'm gonna check out this uh, Mount Fuji. I gotta do it like a hike over there. So I'm not gonna be able to like vlog that much because your boy, uh, give, me, give me one second because I want to make sure that I don't miss this train So yeah, um, I'm not gonna be vlogging while I'm hiking because yeah, I'm gonna be running out of breath So you'll see some flicks some videos here and there and hopefully it's a uh, it's a beautiful vlog You feel me? Well, we just got kicked out of the train and uh, now we have to catch a local train so yeah I don't know how we're gonna make it to Mount Fuji but hopefully uh, we get there finally we got to the train station and let the walking begin we walked did some hiking took stairs and more and more stairs but as we went up the views just got much much better i can even breathe better air you definitely saw that walk right well there was more and more and more stairs if you ever come to japan you definitely got to go up all those stairs so you can at least see this After spending some time in Mount Fuji, we hit up Shinjuku to see the famous Tokyo City lights. At nighttime, it is really a whole different vibe in Tokyo. I got to see the famous 3D cat screen, which for whatever reason he was not moving here, but trust me, he does move. 
we then got to see some pink sakuras that were just glowing with all the city lights. The weather was just right and the street entertainment was actually pretty cool as well. However, the next guy didn't really have the same vibe, at least to me. You tell me though. <laughs> You know, it's a rainy day, but to me, it's actually kind of special at the same time being that it's raining. It's it, it seems just different, you know? It has more character and is gloomy, maybe in the beautiful sunlight and blue sky looks better, but you know, hey, you got this and you gotta go with it, you know? And it looks really, really nice. Also, you see that geisha on the right? More on that later. The next day in Kyoto, the weather was much better. Yo, shout outs to this kid on the left. You are going places, my boy. <laughs> Either way, we started our day chasing more sakuras in the philosopher's path. For those that don't know, cherry blossom trees are only fully bloomed once a year in Japan. So the fact that we witnessed them was really special. The short lifespan of the flowers reminds Japanese that life is just temporary. Next, we got to see the biggest Tori gate in Japan, which is right in front of the Hian Jingu Shrine. This shrine was one of my favorites due to how wide the entrance was, making it look very majestic. Then we got to see more beautiful temples. In one of those temples, there was a pathway over the water that I tried and I prayed to God every single step that I didn't fall in. Remember that geisha that I talked about earlier? Well, she was in that small little temple. And if you haven't figured out by now, that was my beautiful wife. As the day starts coming to an end, we started getting hungry, so we went to a local restaurant where they serve beef katsu. For my Spanish people, this is bifte empanizado, which you had to cook just a little, and if you know me, you know I was really, really happy. We will soon be making a brief stop at Osaka. First stop in Osaka was to see the famous Glico sign in Dotomori. This was pretty fire actually, especially at nighttime. Then we did some light shopping at Bait, Nike, and finally went to the famous Joshin Super Kids Land. Alright, so we finally made it to Super Kids Land in Joshin and we have quite a few floors here. Five to be exact. All of them have something different. So yeah, man, let's go check it out. So here we are in Osaka in a nice toy store right here these are all exclusive items things that have been already sold out discontinued or very exclusive models we have the Dragon Ball section right there we have a nice Star Wars section right here that Darth Vader looks fire man 
Obi-Wan right there, man. All of these figures look so nasty. And we have the Marvel section right here with Deadpool basically <laughs> mimicking the Iron Man snap of the fingers. I mean, we have a little bit of everything right here. Of course, we have Mario right there and friends among other anime figures, which is actually very, very cool. The third floor was full of model cars, all scales, all sizes, all makes, and I'm talking about aisles over aisles. I wish they had something like this in the US. So now we're in the smaller scale of the little cars. And yeah, I'm trying to see if I find something, to be honest with you. I'm trying to at least take something. Oh, look what we have here. Look what we have here. Look what we have here. My dream car. All right, price is not bad. Oh my God, bro this big old r34 you know if you guys didn't know my father was a huge fan of these type of cars not in this scale more the 116 scale and you know if he was alive right now he would definitely be going crazy um you know even if he's not here um i know at one point i will share this with him because this is something that he would have definitely loved to see. It's like aisles and aisles of cars. Hope you like it, Pops. I know you heard that, right? Let's go to Super Nintendo World. Super Nintendo World was everything I ever dreamed of. I mean, look at Mario and Luigi, bro. <laughs> but for real, as soon as you walk in, you feel that you're literally in the world where you played hours a day as a kid. It was bright, colorful, it felt special, everything is themed from the most obvious to the smallest details, including restaurants like the Joshi Snack Island. I ordered the Green Shell Calzone with a Mango Joshi's drink, which of course we needed for more life. Later we head up Kinopio's Cafe, which is where you want to eat if you love all things Mario. My wife and I had the burgers with some desserts. I mean, look at this table, bro. The characters were also amazing, including my boy Toad. Say what's up, what's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Today was a good day. All right, boys and girls. So today we're staying in a traditional Japanese Ryokan. We had to end the trip like this. After many hotels, we have to do it right, right at the end. You feel me? The next day we took the Chinkansen, which is the Japan silver bullet train so we can go back to Tokyo and we needed to be there on time because trust me, they will leave you. You wanna talk about punctuality? 10.14, the ticket leaves. What time is it? 10.14 and we're gone. Yeah, Japan doesn't play with their times. 
Before heading home, we wanted a little snack, so we hit up 7-Eleven, which is pretty different from the US. So 7-Elevens in Japan are a little bit different than in the States. They literally have a bunch of stuff. It's like a little supermarket, like a little grocery store on its own. And you have all of these items like, you don't even see that in the United States. Very different. And yeah, that's pretty fire. And just like that, we're going home. What an amazing trip. Japan has pros and cons, but I liked it so much that I would go back. Shoutouts to my wife for planning this trip and making sure we hit every spot I wanted to go to. And to you guys, thank you for watching.